whole lot of cars that I've been emotionally attached to. There's actually been two. This is one of them. This car was a lot of firsts for me. This is the first time I've ever been out of the state uh, without my parents. I flew to Oklahoma to buy this car with one of my buddies out of state for the first time without my parents, went on a plane and I bought this. My first car I ever purchased, over $10,000. The first car I've ever purchased with the V8. The first probably cool car I've ever purchased. I would agree with that. Not only that, but I've had more memories in this car than I have had in any car I've ever been in, except for your 2012 Dodge Challenger. Those are the two cars I've ever been emotionally attached to, and today we are going to be saying goodbye to the 2004 Cadillac CTS-V. Hello everybody and welcome back to Performance on Wheels. Today is going to be my two year, over two year, yeah. recap summary of ownership on my 2004 V1 Cadillac CTS-V. This has been my favorite car that I have ever owned and today I'm going to be saying goodbye to it. I have somebody driving here from about four hours away to come pick it up and uh, I'm a little bit heartbroken but at the same time I'm very excited for what's to come. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my overall recapture on two years of ownership, so let's get into it. Who I have here today with me is my dad, Todd, who I share almost every memory I have in this car with. Uh, from driving it across the country three times when I bought it in Oklahoma, Hot mm -hmm. Rod Power Tour. It's a five-day adventure with five, 6,000 other cars, drag awesome. racing, autocross, all the way across the country. We've done that twice in this car, yeah. and that was the first time this car has ever been on a drag strip, first time I've ever been on a drag strip driving, first time I've ever been autocrossing, and it's just been tremendous. I have so many good memories. Today was the first time I've ever, don ever done a donut. Checking all the boxes. Checking all the boxes, yeah. trying to make sure that I experience everything to this car's full <laughs> potential. It's a universal car. That's one of many reasons why the CTS-V Gen 1 is awesome, is the low production numbers, the sleeper status. You have a sedan that has 400 horsepower and a stick, and you also have a car that kind of goes across all age groups. It doesn't matter if you're 16 and getting your car or towards the end of not being able to drive a car everyone appreciates this car and i've definitely learned that throughout all the events the car's been at the car shows uh, the hot rod power tour everyone appreciates this car it's hard not to it's really well done and for me your dad who has owned over 60 cars i have no idea where you would get the stupid idea for you to get rid of this car i, I just can't fathom why you'd want to get rid of it i think you got it at a steal of a price it was in amazing condition yep and it's it, it's a rare car so there's less and less of them which i appreciate and i have no idea why you're getting rid of it <laughs> well uh, i think it's time to move on and i'm ready to make memories with a new vehicle so when i was originally shopping for this car let's just run through the whole story here when i was originally shopping for this car i was looking for a c5 z06 Very corvette true. my budget was around 17 grand and uh, a c5 z06 it just it just wasn't going to happen around 17 grand and unfortunately values were going up it was very hard to find so i just randomly changed all of my search filters and the v1 ctsv came into play i didn't even know this car existed i thought it started at the v2 i had no idea this car was a thing and uh i wanted the ls6 from the c5 z06 yeah. so bad you I just, were all of three years old when this car came out yeah i was three <laughs> years old when this car came out but I, I just wanted this engine that was in the z06 so bad and i did some more research i was like man i mean everything about this is just the car that i want cheaper I mean, I get it. I get it's a sedan, but like, why? Why wouldn't I give it a shot? And then randomly, boom! This one pops up on Craigslist. Also, forty-eight thousand nine hundred miles on yeah. it. Three owners. Uh, absolutely flawless. I got this awesome car. Awesome guy that owned it. Awesome guy. Super yeah. cool guy. And uh, negotiated down to fourteen thousand three hundred dollars. The cheapest one in the country by far, with anywhere near these miles on it. I got an absolute steal on it. And then, um, yeah, I changed the exhaust year one, um, drove it across the, the country. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> but when I, after we drove it across the country, realized that there's some issues with the car. So um, n not major issues. Um, it was just uh, common failure points. Replaced basically every bushing in it, threw some headers and changed the exhaust year two, <laughs> got it uh, tuned, and um, it's just been tremendous. Yeah. I have... I have so many good memories in this thing. It has been so good to me, and I'm really looking forward to how good it is to the new owner, and I hope that I can stay connected with him and knowing the journeys of what this car brings. Like I mentioned, I wanted to go through my two years of ownership, 
talk about my experiences, um, basically help anyone that's in the market, uh, just talk about memories for people that do own them. Uh, so let's get right into that, basically. The main issues I had with this car are just the common failure points. I'm gonna throw the video up in the corner now. Uh, you can check out my video from last year where we truly go in depth yep. about everything that was replaced. Um, we talked about everything. In we that we talked about recall. everything. And um, other than the main failure points, which, which I went through in that video, but that includes the diff, motor mounts are the two big ones. Yeah, um, few electrical things. Few electrical things. And uh, other, if you can get around the few electrical things, you, you have some money set aside to prepare to fix or replace the rear differential. Right. This car is rock solid. I have not had a singular issue with it when it comes to the engine, the transmission, the suspension. It has been flawless. It's yeah. been absolutely amazing. Um, I, I haven't, I wouldn't say I beat the crap out of it because I really haven't. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I drive it hard. I, enjoy I, enjoy, it. I enjoy accelerating in it, but by no means am I sitting there at red line for a majority of the time drifting it or doing whatever, but I haven't had any issues. I change the oil every 3000 miles. Um, I keep up on maintenance on everything. I've changed all the fluids. I changed the brakes, the tires, normal maintenance, and it's been flawless. It's yeah. just been so good. Good. So you have a car that's quickly approaching 20 years old. So there's mm -hmm. obviously just some things with age that will need to be done if you're in the market for one of these. But what, what's cool about them is even some of the known failure points yeah. don't necessarily keep you from enjoying the car. No, not at all. I would, I would in a heartbeat, pursue this car again. I look at this car and it's like, it, it, in all honesty, it's the C5 Corvette of sedans. Right. Because it has a crap interior. It's not good. The seats are actually much better than yeah. a C5. I'm not going to lie. The seats are way yeah, better. Totally comfortable for a yeah, road trip. The, the um, speakers and actually the speakers and sound system is a lot better than a C5. But I mean, the whole dashboard and everything is terrible. Yeah. It's not good at all. Plastic party. And then, um, but, but it, it drives really good. You have great connection to the road. Uh, the steering's a bit light. The clutch is a bit light but you can swap in a ls7 clutch and fix that issue right away the steering i don't know how to fix that i'm not going to lie it, it's just a bit light but it does uh, feel very good when you're going through corners If you're looking at one of these for reliability reasons and that's what you're worried about and that's why you're watching this video just letting you know right now this car is reliable like like i said there's there's the couple of minor things but if you have two three grand set aside uh for emergencies this car is going to be amazing for you like the, like reliability wise i would go drive across the country right now in this thing with zero doubt in my mind that it's going to get me where i need to go and i would enjoy accelerating at stoplight still on my drive there like i trust this car i have zero doubt in my mind about it um so if that's what you're worried about and that's why you're watching this video in search of one don't don't worry about it. It, it yeah it, there's a couple of little minor things but two three grand you're good to go go buy yourself a v1 you're gonna make memories yeah. you can have three people with you to make memories while doing it biggest issues probably being the rear diff yeah right? that is the followed. biggest issue that's why i say two to three grand yeah. so followed by maybe a radiator followed yep. by some electrical gremlins yep yep but um other than that guys um, the main things that I'd look for when you're on the market for these is if you go see one in person, pull up on the taillights right up in these areas here. These lenses are commonly known to come off on these um, just because the glue fades out. Uh, so that, that's one common issue and they're really hard to get replacements. The next thing that I would check out that's also incredibly hard to get a replacement on is your headlights. So if they start to fade up top, um, that, that's normal. You can still commonly buff that out. Like mine are starting to fade, but it's still fixable at this point. But if they start to flake bad, um, it, the, the main reason that they start to do this is they have the washer fluid thing that just shoots out and it sprays on the headlight. That washer fluid um, eats away at the coating that they put on the headlights on these, which basically eats away at the entire headlight itself. It's very hard to find housings for these and the aftermarket ones, in my opinion, look yeah. terrible. 
Um, same with the taillights. So just those are a couple of things on the exterior I'd keep your eyes out for. Also, uh, this car, pretty much everything GM has stopped production on. The front bumper, uh, the back bumper, and some of the fenders, GM has stopped production on, and all of them are different from the base. So those are another thing you have to keep your eye out for. If, if you're looking at one of these and you're like, oh, it's just a cracked bumper, it's price cheap, so I can get a new bumper. You gotta realize bumpers, it, oh, one from GM, I've seen well over a grand, so. How about your aftermarket wheel options? Aftermarket wheel options <laughs> is another thing you gotta look out for. Um, these have uh, six lugs. There's only two vehicles ever produced with this bolt pattern, which includes the CTS-V Generation 1 and the Cadillac STS-V, which is even more rare than this CTS-V. Um, so your aftermarket wheel options are very limited. Ford Star makes some, but they're very expensive. Um, and there, there's a couple of minor or very rare race companies that made some light wheels, but there's a guy named Chris Drum who tracks his like crazy. And I kid you not, I swear every comment or every post somebody makes about a set of track wheels for sale, they're already sold by Chris Drum in like a minute. I don't, I don't know what the heck that guy's doing but he's on top of it. Yeah, wheel dealer. If you guys are just watching this video um, for, for curiosity on how the platform and stuff is, I've already covered everything that I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. Uh, the rest of the video is going to be just talking about the best memories that we've had in this car. Uh, if you guys are interested, please feel free to join. Uh, but ultimately, this is also just for us, for memories yeah. that I can go back and watch at one point. But um, yeah, so uh, number one, starting off, uh, my friend Carson and I, flew to Oklahoma, took a flight from here to, I believe it was Chicago and to Oklahoma, uh, got up at 3 a.m. and uh, I brought my friend Carson with because he said he could drive a stick. <laughs> I get there and Carson says, you know what? I don't feel confident driving a stick. So here I am. Um, I didn't budget to have a hotel on the way back because I, I had my budget in mind, what I wanted to spend and a hotel I didn't, want to, I didn't want to pay for. So I had, I think it was an 11 hour drive, 12 hour drive. I didn't sleep at all the night before because I was all excited. And that was the most miserable drive of my entire life. Uh, I was incredibly tired. Carson didn't drive, slept half the way there. Yeah, <laughs> Iowa at night can do crazy things to your head. Yeah, and then, yeah, my, my head was going insane. I called you freaking out around, I don't even remember what time it was hit because I hit a bird. Um, uh, my grill got smashed in, um, the little chrome strip on my hood got smashed in. Yep. I replaced both of them within a week, but man, that was, that was one of the most miserable drives of my life. And that was the start of ownership to my CTSV. Just, yeah. just, just a good time. Yeah. I remember you getting it home and just taking a peek at it. It was like, holy crap, this is a clean car. This thing is cool. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. I remember. Um, you telling me just make sure the car is clean when I got there and I remember when I first laid my eyes on it I was like wow, I wasn't expecting that like yeah. like it was Flawless there's this little chip out of the front bumper other than that I could not find a singular flaw on the entire car. Yeah. It was so clean Some So so clean. engine mounts underneath. Yeah, yeah. yeah, other than that. I mean it was it, it, I was so happy with my purchase that, That's what's awesome about the CTS V2 is it like it looks pretty stellar from the factory like they got the they're, stance figured out yeah. Yeah, there. You don't really have to do anything to them. No, no, it it does look good. I did put some wider tires on it with uh, some lower a uh, uh, lower profile, so it does have a bit more of aggressive stance than the factory tires did. But this car's not lowered. It doesn't have anything done to the suspension, and it looks good. Yeah. Like I like the way this car looks. <sighs> what's another What's another great memory that you have in this thing? What, what was the next one? I mean, a lot of them come back to the hot rod power tour because that's mm -hmm. just that's a week straight of yep. making memories. So. Yeah, you know, driving through. I, I got a speeding ticket. Yep. We, we, at the start of our journey last year, got a speeding ticket. <laughs> that was hilarious. Literally. Only car on the road. Only, only car on the trooper. road. Only car yeah. on the road. About 10 minutes into the journey, you get a speeding ticket. <laughs> he comes up to you for window tint. <laughs> window tint in my plate. car, no plate. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. I've driven this car, I don't know how long in Minnesota. Never gotten yeah. pulled over for tint or plate. We're in the middle of absolute <laughs> nowhere. That was awesome. Like 8 a.m. The first power tour uh, was a bit of a stressful start to the journey because my rear diff bushing went bad right before the start of it. Yeah. So we were freaking out. Yep. Like, like, are, are we doing this? Are we not doing this? Um, I, I, I don't know what to do. My, is my diff going to blow up? 
what's going to happen? Uh, I had enough money in my account to where it, it, I was like, uh, if, if it blows up, maybe we can find one somewhere. Right. Maybe I can get a, a CR, uh, SRX. Yeah. And maybe I can find an SRX yeah. diff out of a junkyard if we take this. So I loaded my trunk with tools. Like I, I got every tool I could possibly find in my toolbox. Prepared. My entire thing was filled. Um, and I was like, all right, well, we're going to, we're going to drive this thing across the country. If my rear diff blows up, I have everything I need to do yeah. this at a hotel in the parking lot. I just remember <laughs> like going between shifts, like how painful it was. <laughs> you couldn't figure it out. Yeah. You had so to have like I, the right foot motion. Yeah. So I, I managed to figure out the motion where I could drive this thing really smooth with how bad my bushing was. Here's a, here's a picture of how terrible it was or a video. Like I could just push the thing straight through. Like as soon as I took the diff out, I just there. pushed like, the was, bushing yeah. out. There was nothing there it was metal and a bolt just just yep. going we up and down it's hilarious yep. it was hilarious and uh, i took it down the drag strip like that because i figured out the foot motion basically i figured out how to not make the diff jump but whenever you drove it um it was just oh, terrible just painful, the whole the painful. whole car shook it was so bad so pretty much the entire first power tour i drove the whole way because you didn't want to yeah, drive like, it your car's broke <laughs> i'm along for the ride um and then I took uh, around, I think I put $6,000 into this car that, that winter, and I, I redid everything. You went all out. Um, I went all out to make sure it was going to be the most reliable V1 that I could buy, other than upgrading the rear diff. And uh, I'm very glad that I did. It is, it is just such a good driver now. It, yep. Our second power tour we had... Um, that was just a just a blast. We had a couple of good times racing some people. Yeah, uh, we had some Remember good a times. Charger in St. Louis. Yeah, that... Charger in St. Louis blew his doors off. There was a, a scat pack on the drag strip and a scat pack on the road. I was very impressed with how this car held up next to a scat pack. It, it was impressive. a good. Yeah, it was a good time, especially with the full load. Yeah, yeah, we had three people and 200 pounds of stuff in the back, and it was very impressive mm -hmm. how close it was. But yeah, man, just, just memories. And not only that, but just memories with friends driving around, going and taking some awesome pictures with it, going on cruises around town, our few videos that yep. we've made on it. The first car that I've truly, like, like I, I took this thing apart and modified it. So that was yeah. the first car I've ever done that to, and I learned a lot. I'm very glad that I did. Disassembled in the garage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was good. Good, Absolutely. good memories. <sighs> All right, guys. Well... Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video. I think that's just going to wrap it up. Don't need to drag it on any longer. If you guys stayed it, stayed along for the ride, I appreciate it. Um, but just know if you are interested in LS stuff, there's a C5 Z06. I'm not buying a CTS-V. I'm not buying anything else this time. I'm going after the we'll car see. that I want. We'll see. I am getting a C5 Z06. It's going to happen. So if you guys are interested in that or following along on my journey in that, please hit subscribe. Thank you guys so much. See you guys next time.